This is it, your final opportunity to join the Six Pillars at Sea Marriage Getaway. In April 2025, we're setting sail for our last ever marriage getaway, and we want you there to experience the unforgettable journey to the extraordinary marriage you desire. Don't wait. Spots are extremely limited, and they're filling fast. Get all the details now at oneextraordinarymarriage.com slash getaway and reserve your place before it's gone. From Naples, Florida, this is the One Extraordinary Marriage Show, where being busy is overdone, romancing is fun, and scheduling sex has taken the guesswork out of wondering when you're going to get some. I'm Tony DeLorenzo, your co-host, along with my beautiful wife, Elisa. From coast to coast and around the world, thank you for joining us. It's time to talk sex, love, and commitment. Give us a call or text us on the Hug Hotline at 858-876-5663, or send us an email to hugs at oneextraordinarymarriage.com. In today's episode, we're reflecting on the value of being up close and personal in order to deepen the relationship that you have with each other and with others that want to do marriage well. There's an anonymous quote in regard to relationships that say, relationships are harder now because conversations become texting, arguments become phone calls, and feelings become status updates. Mm. We're talking about that as we talk about being up close and personal in, in this week's episode. But first, we start every episode with a hug. And a hug is really an opportunity to celebrate you, to celebrate your marriage, to celebrate where you're being intentional. And this hug comes from an email that we received after the Six Pillars of Intimacy weekend in Fort Worth, Texas. It starts off with WOW, with mm. capital letters and exclamation points. This conference led us to being closer to each other than we have in our whole marriage. Mm. And we've been married for a while. Praise God. I've been praying for this kind of growth for many years, and God worked through you and Tony. Thank you for serving the Lord. Mm. Yes. So for those of you who were at uh, the Six Pillars of Intimacy weekend in Fort Worth, Texas with us, we said it there, but I want to say it again. Thank you so much for being there. It was truly an honor and a blessing to be there. And for all of those who've attended any live event with us at some way, point or form, thank you. It, it truly is so awesome for us to get up close and personal with you at those places. And, and, you know, this has really been, we are coming out of probably in the history of One Extraordinary Marriage, the most um, active month mm -hmm. in terms of travel with Tony and I getting to see so many of you in different places around the country. Um, over the course of the last four weeks, we were at Calvary Church in Naperville for the Extraordinary Marriage Conference. We put on the Six Pillars of Intimacy weekend at the Stockyard in Fort Worth. And then it was Marriage Uncensored mm -hmm. at Relevant Church in Locust Grove, Georgia. Mm -hmm. So we've been all over. Um, we've got a chance over these last four weeks to meet couples who were dating and engaged and know they want to do marriage well. Um, they want to have that extraordinary marriage after they say, I do. We've met couples married 50 plus years who recognize that the growth in their marriage is never done. And, you know, it's always super special um, when we get to see all of you face to face. But I think it's even more special to watch all of the couples who attend get to know each other mm -hmm. and, and the friendships and the relationships that are formed, the vulnerability that comes out when couples know, hey, we all want to have an extraordinary marriage here and we're all going after the same thing. And, and it's this beautiful opportunity because w throughout a weekend, you know, we have the opportunity to laugh with you, to celebrate with you, to cry with you, to, to you know, play games and, and do all kinds of fun things in a weekend or, or in a week, like with the marriage getaways and that type mm -hmm. of thing. And, and we're grateful. Um, you all need to know that, that Tony and I don't take it lightly when you invite us in as one of your marriage resources, right? Mm -hmm. When you invite us into your marriage and that resource, and then we get the opportunity to see you face to face, to have what's been names in a Facebook group or an email that we received become someone that, that we're talking to in the flesh. It like, it's so exciting for us. It really is. And you, you know, from the events that we've attended here and then marriage getaway, which we had in April and we have our our next marriage getaway coming up in 2025. Um, I want to just say this here right now up at the top of the episode that the 2025 Six Pillars at Sea marriage getaway will be our last marriage getaway for the foreseeable future. So we're not going to put one on in 26 or 27 that we know of. We're going to 
We're going to just put that to the side for now. So if you've been wanting to get on a marriage getaway with us and others in the one family, please do so. You can go to one extraordinary marriage.com slash getaway to learn more and to register. Um, but it is so amazing to, to be with people. So many of you have become friends and I want to say online friends mm -hmm. and you've come to know us, right? You've come to know us through the podcast or maybe the articles or Instagram or the six pillars of intimacy book. And so you know us really well. And what I find so fun for, for myself is putting the pieces together mm. and going, well, how did you come to one extraordinary marriage? Mm -hmm. where, where did you find us? Or, or, or even some of you like a sister, a brother, a mom, a dad, mm -hmm. aunt, uncle shared one extraordinary marriage with you. And that's how you found us. And you've gotten to know who we are. And so what I find so fascinating is at these events, just getting to sit down, talk to you a little bit and learn your story. Mm -hmm. Where are you in your marriage? How long have you been married? What happened in your marriage that the cracks formed? And where did that breakthrough happen? I, I want to just share one couple briefly that um, we met here in Fort Worth and just in there talking to them. And literally he looked at me and he goes, Tony, you saved our marriage five years ago. And I was like, to me, there's no greater joy. It's the mission. Impact one marriage every day. Mm -hmm. And that was one story and, and many others that we got to hear and that you, the one family, got to share with us. Absolutely. And, you know, Tony and I have to be really honest with you. I mean, the first probably 10 years of our marriage, I don't know that we ever attended a marriage event. I don't think we attended, uh, this is my thought, I don't think we truthfully attended a marriage event until after we did the 60 Day Sex Challenge and we spoke at that marriage retreat we did. Right. So I'm thinking it's... Uh, it, it, do you, can you think of... I can't think of anything else. Maybe like a, an evening date night type thing we did, but nothing where it was like an overnight getaway, like... We're immersing ourselves with other couples at a marriage event. Exactly. And, and I don't even know that I knew that it was a thing back then. You know, it's, mm. it's really interesting. For those of you that don't know, Tony and I got married in 1996. So we are, you know, in the mid 90s. Yes, for all of you that are doing the math, we've been married for 28 years. Um, but with that, like we didn't, you know, the internet wasn't what it is today. Like it wasn't like you were getting all these pop-up ads for come to this marriage event or do this marriage enrichment or. There was or, no social media. There was no social media. Like none of those things existed. You forums. Like, there were forums, but. Yeah. But, like I wasn't on forums. And, you know, the, the accessibility to information and the knowledge that these things were happening was really, I mean, I have to say kind of sparse. Mm -hmm. And I do think some of it too was the fact that we in those years had attended much smaller churches that didn't even put on marriage events. True. Right? So you have these, one, there isn't a lot of information out there. Two, maybe in a smaller church, mm. there isn't that type of marriage event or a marriage conference or getaway or that type of thing. But for Tony and I, like once we started attending marriage conferences, marriage getaways, like it's something that that started finding a place regularly on our calendar because Absolutely. we valued that time, that time away. Because I, I think what a lot of people don't realize is that when you get that time away, whether it's for a weekend or a week or whatever length of time it might be, you get to fo refocus on yourselves and on the marriage, right? Yeah. It, and, and, and you get to refocus, but you get to focus on mm -hmm. your marriage, where you are today and where you're heading, which... For Elisa and I, it was great. I, I remember them so well and so much during when our children were younger. Mm -hmm. and, and yes, was it was it a task to try to find sitters and where they're going to stay and what was going to happen and how we were going to drop off or were you know people coming to the house? And yeah, it took work. It mm -hmm. took time. And yet, what I realize now is as much as that was sometimes a pain in the butt to do and have to figure out how much that was worth every penny, every minute, because it allowed Elisa, like she said, to refocus on us and focus on what's ahead. Well, I think for both of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. For both <laughs> of us. Like, oh, absolutely. A lot of Lisa. I'm like, well, yeah. No, no, no. For me too. as well. No, I, I loved that time because it was just sort of like, Oh, like I don't have a kid chirping in my ear every 
two seconds, you know? Well, and that's what, an, uh, over all three events, that's what a lot of people told us. Like, we've made a weekend of it, or, you know, our kids are staying with family and friends. This We've made this time be about us. Other people, um, other couples shared that they were just excited to have that undivided time together. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, you know, some of them joked about being able to sleep in or eat whenever or whatever they wanted to do or the activities. Um, so many of these weekends revolved around Saturday night being a date night. Mm-hmm. And it was always so fun to see the couples, um, you know, if they tagged us or whatnot, or, or came on Sunday and shared with us at the churches, what they did on Saturday night. You know, we saw uh, there was a couple in one of the couples revisited the place where they got engaged mm-hmm. and took pictures there all those years later. Couples were going to top golf. They were going out dancing. They were doing all of these different types of things on that on, as a part of those weekends to rekindle that that space of romance and fun. Yeah. And I just want to, I like to share though on the other side of it, sort of just, just taking a step back on walking in a room Mm. where you may not know many folks Mm -hmm. or being nervous or feeling like, man, my spouse is putting a spotlight on me or on our marriage. And there's, there can feel some guilt. There can feel some shame. There can feel like, I don't know what I'm getting into. And what I want to say is whenever you come into an event with us, I'm going to just say with us, because I don't know what others are doing. We are there to welcome you with open arms, no matter where you may be in your marriage. You know, it's interesting that you say that because, um, that very first night of the the six pillars of intimacy weekend. And I heard Mm -hmm. similar things at both of the churches, uh, But in that space, a gentleman was sitting right next to me. We were having a dessert social after and, and he said, you know, I'm really, I'm really kind of amazed at the level of vulnerability after just a few hours. Mm -hmm. And I looked at him and I said, you know, that's something I think that is actually really unique to the culture of the one family, which means all of you that are listening to this, um, from episode four, when Tony said that we were going to be open, honest, and transparent, we have always brought a high level of vulnerability to every event where we are at. It's the same vulnerability you guys hear on the podcast. But what's interesting is that when people are live Mm -hmm. and they hear that and they experience it and they're experiencing it with their spouse, the there, it makes it okay to be real. Mm -hmm. It makes it okay to be vulnerable and other people pick up on it and the, the guards go down you know, not for everybody at the exact same space. It's not like all the walls come down, you know, falling down, but there is this, there is a unique quality that people pick up on. Mm -hmm. And and I think that's why, why events are so important for couples, because it allows you to focus attention and intention, Mm. Mm -hmm. both of those things. And, you know, like where are you putting your eyes and where are you putting your intentions around your marriage, because I will tell you, um, at a six pillars of intimacy event, um, we do stir a few things up. I mean, you can't talk about the six pillars of intimacy and not have a little something, something get stirred up. But I think that's part of attending an event too. Like you don't just go, you don't just go into a room to meet other, you know, meeting other people, being in a different environment to stay the same. Right. Like you go sit on your couch if you want to stay the same, but But if you step into a new opportunity, you have an opportunity to break out of the ruts Mm -hmm. that the two of you have fallen into, to recognize where complacency or apathy, hello, that January episode, um, have had a chance to work their way in. You've got an opportunity to look at things with fresh eyes because you don't have all of the other distractions of life, kids and work and, you know, whatever other obligations that you might have. Because there's so much, there's so much that vies for your attention on the day to day when you're at home that you don't necessarily get all of those opportunities that you'd love to have to be up close and personal with your spouse. I can't tell you how many coaching clients are like, Elisa, I don't know where we're going to find 10 minutes to talk. And I'm like, uh, we, we should be able to find 10 minutes in 168 hours in a week. But, but our lives are so frenzied and so full that that can be hard. But you get away for a weekend and you get into a room and you break out of the, the routine and the regular and you step into a place where the only focus is on one another and your marriage. Mm-hmm. And that can change everything. And we're going to talk about what that looks like after this break. 
Are you a professional pillow fighter or a nine to five low cost time travel agent, or maybe real estate sales on Mars is your profession? It doesn't matter. Whatever it is you do, however complex or intricate, Monday.com can help you organize, orchestrate, and make it more efficient. Monday.com is the one centralized platform for everything work-related. And with Monday.com, work is just easier. Monday.com, for whatever you run. Go to Monday.com to learn more. There are toys, and then there are freak-out-worthy toys. Toys that get big reactions like... OMG, no way! Or... Best present ever! Or... It's what I've always wanted! For those toys, you need Walmart. They've got exclusives from major brands like Disney, Barbie, and Adventure Force that you can't find anywhere else. Toys that make kids jump for joy. Thank you, thank you! And make you a hero for giving them. Shop hundreds of exclusive toys. Yes! Welcome to your Walmart. We're back. And we're talking about how to get up close and personal in a way that is meaningful for your marriage and using marriage events to do just that. And I want to encourage each one of you because we hear this a lot. You know, one of the things that we hear from folks, and we heard it a lot over this last month, is this is our first marriage event we've ever attended. Yeah. Or this is our first marriage event in 10 years or 15 years, or I can't remember the last time we went. And like, I know we've done one, but I can't remember how long it's been. Right. As you start looking at what's coming up in your marriage, commit to attending a marriage event. Like start looking, whether it's, it's an event that your church does, whether it's one of the six pillars of intimacy events, whatever that is, make the decision that you're going to step out of the routine and invest in your marriage. Um, and I just want to say this too. Yeah. We have an events page. Okay. You can go to oneextraordinarymarriage.com slash events. I'll put links here in the episode note for everything we're, we're sharing. We are... Still going to be doing events with churches and organizations Mm -hmm. just because of marriage getaway. This is the last one in 2025 for the foreseeable future. We already have three on the calendar for next year at churches, Austin, Tulsa, and Omaha, Nebraska. If you're a pastor and you want to bring the six pillars to your church, reach out to us. We have worked with so many churches and pastors, organizations, and we can set something up that is just powerful for your community. But don't think that, oh, well, we don't have anything. We have people, like, literally, when we were in, at Calvary Church, I think we had six, seven, or eight states represented. We had mm-hmm. people driving in from Wisconsin, Iowa, um, Ohio, Go Bucks. Ohio, Indiana, y- you know. So, yeah, maybe you got to make a drive. But you know what? Elisa and I, when we went to our, our marriage event in January... We drove four hours from San Diego to Las Vegas. We're going to one this January, and we're driving from Naples to Orlando. So, you know, sometimes we got to just drive. Some people flew, have to fly. It's okay to have to, if it's not right in your backyard. Mm. Even Elisa and I know that, and have had to and have attended events that are not just in our backyard. Absolutely, we've had to take ourselves out of our comfort zone and get out. Well, and that's that's my second point. Use the event to get out of your comfort zone. Oh, very good. Um, because again, like I said, you know, you don't like don't go to an event if the two of you want to stay the same. Save your time, save your money, save your resources. Don't worry about arranging for the kids. But if it's time, you know, and you recognize, hey, we just kind of shake things up a little bit. Like we've been a little too routine. Get in, get into a different room right? Take advantage of those opportunities to meet new people, mm-hmm. right? To find out what's going on in their lives, to, to see what you can learn from them. Take advantage <clears throat> of, of the teaching to see your marriage with fresh eyes. I mean, it's kind of like the hug that I shared, right? This, this person's been praying for years for, for just growth and breakthrough in their marriage. They sat in a room for two and a half days and, and are experiencing it and feeling it. Mm-hmm. Like get out of your comfort zone. Yeah. And in that comfort zone that you're typically in, when you get out of it, things get shaken. Mm -hmm. You're going to, you're going to find some cracks maybe, or you're going to see pillars that are just so strong that you lean into them. Either way, growth happens. Mm -hmm. And what do we say here at One Extraordinary Marriage? Be intentional and take action. Mm -hmm. And when we get out of our comfort zone, we're being intentional in a way of saying, we're going to do this. And then the action steps come from the teaching and the learning that we get when we're at an event. Absolutely. Uh, Next, you want to leverage that focused time together, right? This is, this is a time without your children, 
if you've got children at home. I mean, we still have, we still have an 18 year old that lives in our house. So this was, you know, even for us, these weekends away have been times together. Although Mm -hmm. when we were in Fort Worth, because she was visiting friends in Texas, she was bouncing in and out of our hotel room. So it was a little different. Uh, But but have the conversations, mm-hmm. right? You don't have those distractions. You can get out and do the things maybe that you wouldn't do before. Like I know specifically when we were in, um, when we were in Fort Worth, we literally, we were like a block and a half off of where the stockyards were. And every day, twice a day, um, there would be a cattle drive where the longhorn, which two of them have horns that are 10 feet tip to tip and they would come walking down kind of that main street in front of the stockyards and if you've never seen it i mean it's an exciting four minutes yes but but it was something fun to do because where else are you going to do that that kind of thing right getting into those activities where you can just do something unusual or be in a different place because changing up your location whether it's having conversations or where you're grabbing a bite to eat or things like that changes the dynamic between the two of you you're not in the same old same old you're looking at things with fresh eyes and you're in a place where if you so choose and this is a choice you can be fully present with one another Mm -hmm. but you got to choose it in the same way you got to choose it any other day of the week. Um, Also, when you are at an event, engage in the activities fully. It's super easy. And I know this because I am definitely more introverted than Tony is. It is super easy to be like, yeah, you know what? I'm just going to sit back and I'm just going to kind of watch what's going on here. And I'm not saying the introverts have to suddenly become extroverted. I'm not saying that at all. But go into the weekend with the intention that you are going to be fully present and you're going to fully participate in whatever way you can Mm -hmm. in all of the activities, whether that's... um, you know, at our events, there's always couple time, right? And mm-hmm. so you're going to sit there. That's not going to be your like, oh, got to go to the bathroom. And you pop out every single time. Or if there's a game, you're going to cheer on the other couples if you're not participating. Or if it's, you know, have conversations with other couples at your table, you're still going to engage in that, right? You're not going to be like, oh, I don't want to. But really stepping into this place of saying, hey, you know what? The organizers of an event design this event for me and my spouse, To the best of my abilities, I am going to fully engage in these activities to see what's on the other side of it for my marriage, Mm -hmm. right? We've never been to an event where we're like, well, that was just busy work. What was the point of that? There's always always a reason behind it. We always get something out of it. Yeah, there's always a golden nugget. And... And I think that's sometimes where we need to have that perspective when we engage and are fully in, intentional of ourselves and what we're doing at the event, there's going to be some breakthrough somewhere. Mm-hmm. Now, it may not be the the like miraculous like 180 degree turn and all, but it may be a one degree. And that one degree over time is massive. And so I know for myself, I go to events seeking insights, mm. like to, to look at myself, to look at our marriage and to go, where, where are we? Like, let's, let's get a, like a little compass out or, or just put ourselves on a map and go, where are we in our marriage? And let's, let's, let's just sort of hone ourselves in and then go, okay, where are we headed? Mm. But engaging with others. And one of the things that it, it, we said from the top, whenever you come to an event, either one that we're putting on, that is at a church or an organization, you are going to find folks in the one family there. Mm. And so you are engaging with like-minded couples, which is wonderful. And honestly, for the events that I've even attended, there's nothing like it because you all understand what it's about. Mm. We're here to have extraordinary marriages. We're here to strengthen our pillars of intimacy. So when we engage in the activities, those around us are already there. They already know. It's not like you're walking in a room and nobody knows anything. And so I find that to be just really cool. And those that are intentional, the roadmaps they come up with, Mm -hmm. the design of their marriage, how they're going to strengthen those pillars is, is intentional for them. Absolutely. And I think that that really highlights, you know, as, as 
you look at the flow of this, it's also recognizing the fact that, that an event, sh like leaving from the event shouldn't be the end of the event. You want to continue the growth hmm. and, and the exploration and the curiosity after the event. Don't just, you know, after an event, close your notebooks, hop back in your car, throw it in the back seat and just be like, okay, that was good. And, you know, check that box. It's how can we continue to grow and foster our marriage very specifically as we're talking about uh, your, our friendships. I mean, one of the things I love every time, especially when there are people from so many different states represented is as the conversations happen, you see the phone numbers being exchanged. You mm -hmm. see the, hey, let's follow up and stay in touch. And, and that's really a beautiful thing because now your network mm -hmm. of couples who are excited to do marriage well is growing. And, and I don't think we can ever have too many people in our lives who are excited to do marriage well. But it's also that ability for uh, to be encouraged, to, to stay plugged in and to go, okay, how are we, like specifically around the six pillars. And, and we challenge couples when you leave a six pillars event to go, what are you going to do for the next 30 days? Which pillar are you going to focus on? Mm -hmm. We don't want you to just close up your notebook and be like, hey, Tony and Lisa, that was great. I'm going home now and I'm going to uh, like forget that this ever happened. We want... And our heart is, you know, if you are attending a marriage event, that you walk away going, this is my next step. This is, this is that, that baby step that I'm going to start with, that we're going to start with. And we're going to go after finding ways to create wins in our marriage, right? We're going to do this on the same team. We're going we're gonna to step into this place because here's the thing. And, and we say this a lot. It's not about the the big things, right? It's not about those, like the events are important because they serve as that reset and that refocus. But what do you do, you know, if if a weekend event is two or three days, what do you do the other 100, 363 days of the year? Yeah. How are you growing and taking the knowledge, the nuggets, the what, you know, whatever it is that you got out of that weekend and applying it to your year so that when you go next year, or you go to a different one next year, you're like, okay, here's what we worked on last year. What are we working on in 2025 or 2026 or 2027? What's going to be our next thing that, that as a couple or as an individual, because we do often, one of the things we, we've said over these last um, few weeks is focus on me before we, right? Focus on what I can do. Mm -hmm. Focus on what I need to work on before I look at you or I look at us and say, this is what we need to work on. And so you think about that growth. It's not just, it's not just growth for a weekend. It's growth for a lifetime. And I want to put one piece in here because we shared with you the episode that came after our event in January, which is episode 790, The Greatest Threat to Our Marriage is Apathy. That was the one we attended. That was the one we attended. And so you may come up after an event and have a tough conversation like Elisa and I did. And you can listen to episode 790 to hear that. But here's the thing. Even though that event wasn't what I expected the growth that came after the event because we were willing to be open, honest, and transparent with one another. We were willing to engage one another in a time that we needed it in our marriage around apathy and where we were has allowed us over the last 10 months since that event to where we are today mm -hmm. to look back and go, wow, we are in a much different place back then. And we were willing because that event created some jarring, like like shaking in us that we had to go, all right, are we going to grow mm -hmm. or are we going to stay stagnant? And we have that choice. And that event, I believe, for us going there this year in January has changed the trajectory of our marriage. And again, it wasn't an event we put on. We attended just like you would be attending, meeting new people, not even knowing them because this is a church in Arkansas that put this on mm -hmm. in Vegas, you know, and we, we practice what we preach. We walk into rooms, we walk into events, we attend, we have the hard conversations, mm -hmm. we grow, we learn, we change just, just like all of you. We're not exempt. We're not above, you know, above doing that. We practice what we preach. Yeah. 
And so this week, think about it. Think about your marriage and, you know, what does it look like if we step into an event? 2025 is around the corner. What could you do? What event could you attend, a marriage event that you could attend that could change the trajectory of your marriage and give you the tools, maybe that little oomph, you know, with the six pillars of intimacy so you can have the extraordinary marriage you desire. Like I said, come check out where we're going to be. Know that we would love to have you attend any of ours, but we also understand you may not be near where we're going to be. So find something that will fit the two of you so you can have that growth from an event that you can't get anywhere else. You guys have yourselves a fantastic week. We'll catch you next week. Love you guys. Thank you for listening to the One Extraordinary Marriage Show. If you love this podcast, please leave a review on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you are listening. Your review helps others find the show and know that it's the right fit for them and their marriage.